So today I'm going to show you how to actually add post uh, requests. So click on a button like this one. So if I click on this new country, I should be able to enter some data. For instance, Ukraine. Ukraine. And the capital is Kiev. And continent is Europe. And if I click on save, it automatically adds to the list. Okay. So this uh, 17, I really don't know why it happened. So we're going to fix that later. But today I'm going to show you how to add, make a post request from Angola to Node.js and all the way to, to PostgreSQL. So of course, you know, we already did the Node.js API. So that we already did. So today we are going to be doing using Angular material to make this post request. We are going to be using the HTTP module. We are going to be doing this pop-up form with Angular Material, which we did in the last video. And today we are simply going to focus on making a post request. So let's get started. So let me close this one because this is the one I already worked on. So let me close this one and open the actual one. Again, I would like to remind you to subscribe. If you've not subscribed to my channel, uh, this time for you to subscribe so that you don't miss any updates. And also feel free to leave me a comment let me know if this has been informative for you and also let me know where you have challenges and I'll be sure to help you. So let me close everything and let's start from the scratch from where we stopped in part 20. So this is the application we are currently working on and let me start it up so that we can see exactly where we stopped. Again, part of the step-by-step -step is right here in my website. So we are going to be using part of this step by step and just a little bit of modification uh, we are going to be doing. So if I go back to the page, if I go back to the page, you see that this is where we are. So if I say new country, this is what we have. We don't really have the, uh, the form yet. Okay, so what we are going to do now, we are going to add the form. So, uh, so what I like to do is to use Angular Material. So I'm going to use Angular Material um, card and also Angular Material form. So the first thing I would like to do is to go to Angular Material website because we are going to actually be using Angular Material website a lot. So I'm going to say Angular Material, uh, um, Angular Material submit form. And let's stay here for now. And first let's go to card, okay? So if I go to card, I want to use Card, uh, math card uh, slash math card. So let's see. So if I go to examples, maybe I go to the API, you know, so we have math card module. And if I go to the HTML, so there's HTML math card slash math card. So if I go back to my application, so the pop up, instead of having it here, I'm going to simply have the habit, I say math card. So I'm going to say, math card but now we don't have angular material or uh, math card module so we are going to simply import math card module in our app module the uh, ts file so let's go to app module so i'm going to come here and import uh, imp uh math card module so it's going to be angular material slash card i think so this will be it Okay, so the next thing we want to do now is to uh, now build up our form. So the form is going to contain the country description, the capital, the code. I mean, all these um, items we have right here. So we want to have all this in the form so that we'll be able to enter some data. So let's go back here and I'm going to the country component. So these are the dialog box. Okay. So here in the contents, so inside the content, we are going to be adding the form, so we have this form here. So I can actually just add the form uh, right here. Uh, I mean, we can add different form groups. So let's start with the, let's start with only one. So I'm going to come here and remove. So I don't know why this is messing up. I remove this and add one form group item, and I'm going to save. If I save and go back to the page, let's see. If I refresh this page and say new country, we see one item here, but you can see it's not looking so good. So we are going to fix this. So what we are going to do is to add all the controls and then we are going to adjust the size a little bit. 
I have the control already set up, so I'm going to just add it. Uh, I'm going to just copy and paste it. Okay, so I pasted the control. So let me explain to you what is happening here. So the form is going to be to have ng form. I think I have that in my website explained. Okay, so it should have ng form. Uh, so this form group, I will have handling forms of me. I think I actually went too far, but it's okay. So we have this ng form here. So the form we need to have uh, ng form. And inside that, we now have all the controls. This is how the control form group. We have the label. We have the label. We have the, uh, the input ID description uh, name. Then the description. The name is uh, the ID is optional or the name is optional. But you also have to put this ng model. So that basically it add all the controls. So now we are not doing any drop down. We are not doing any um, next thing or any uh, relationships. Uh, so for now, it's just plain input text, text uh, fields and just add all of them. And I also use MathCAD, okay? So when we click on this, it's going to open a dialog box, okay? So I'm going to save everything. Now I'm going to complain because when we have ng submit here, we've not written the submit function. So we are going to go to write the submit function uh, in our Angular in, in the country component.cs. So I'm going to go to country component.cs and I'm going, we are going to write, not you. So if I come here, I can just uh, uh, go to country component.cs and we are going to write the on submit uh, function. So I'm going to country component.cs. So here we are going to write the on submit function. So I already wrote it. So I'm going to simply copy and paste. So this is basically how the unsubmit function looks like. So console.log, I'm just taking f the value. f is the form, and we are taking the content, and I just want to display it in the console. So you can see unsubmit, f captures the value of the form. This is called template-driven form. Later on, we are going to be talking about reactive forms later. The difference, I also made a video about the difference between template-driven forms and reactive forms. You can find this video in the description of this very video just below. But for now, just know that template-driven forms is very easy to use. You simply have your on submit and specify the on submit function with the parameter f, which represents the content of the form. And then you need a submit button right here. I call it save. It has to be inside the form. Okay, so we have this ng form. We're simply going to add it to the um, add the import statement as well. So we have the URL where to submit to, and then we have HTTP client dot post. HTTP client dot post is for submitting to a URL endpoint to make a, a post request. Exactly the same way we have HTTP client dot get. Now HTTP client dot post takes a URL and it also takes a form value. Okay. And then dot subscribe. After you subscribe, we, are, we don't expect any return value, but we expect that when you submit, it's going to um, reload the table so that you see the newly submitted item. And then we simply uh, close the modal dialog. So hopefully, I'm not forgetting anything. Um, yes, I forget something. I'm going to just tell you what I forgot. Let's first make sure everything works. What I forgot is that the size of this, uh, the size of this form, have to be adjusted. So let me go back here. So if I click here, you see it doesn't make much sense. So we have to adjust the size of this form, and to do that, we are going to modify the function that opens this form. And the function that opens this form, I think we call it uh, open dialog with templates. And in the second parameter of the open function, you want to specify the configuration. The open configuration does it, the size and the position and so on. Uh, so I'm going to specify the width. Uh, I think this is how to specify it. So let me use 50% for instance. I don't know if it's uh, this column or maybe equal to, I can't remember. But let's go to just check if it works with, um, with. Okay, so this is fine. So you can adjust to 30 to 40 and see what looks good. Okay. So when we submit, we hope it's going to submit to the endpoint. So let's try it out. 
Now I'm going to add, let's see a country that is not there. So now I'm going to add a new country. Let's say we add a country, Poland. Let's add Poland. Uh, Poland and the capital is Warsaw. And the code is POL and the nationality is Polish. Polish. And the continent should be Europe. And I'm going to click on save. So you can now see that we have Poland added right here. So you can play around. The code is available to you in my GitHub repository. And the, the procedure is also available in my website uh, right here. And I'll be stopping here. Again, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. Leave me a comment to let me know if you have challenges or if you don't have challenges but you simply benefited from my classes. Also, please let me know. If you want to support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee, you see a link to buy me a coffee in the description box of this video and also on my website. And again, I'd like to recommend you connect with me on my social network profile, Jigs, GitHub, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, so that we can actually communicate. And, and if you have challenges, I'm going to help you fix them. I remain kind on the tech pro and I'm always there for you.